Hi, my name's Richard Baines and I provide training for Cinema 4D from 3dverve.com. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to restore default Cinema 4D preferences and how easy it is to change them without realising that you've done it. I'll also be looking at how you can save a particular file so that every time you open Cinema 4D, it opens with that file. It can be quite useful. On a side note, I'll be showing you how to customise user menus. Not something you really want to know if you're a beginner, but I've not seen a tutorial on it anywhere else, so I thought I'd include that here. OK, let's make a start with the Preferences. So to open my Preferences, I go to Edit, and then Preferences. And if I change anything in my Preferences, those changes will be retained. Let me give you an example. If I go to the Scheme Colours drop down here by clicking on the little triangle, go for Editor Colours, Background Selected, just click here, and I'm going to change it to a nice bright pink colour. It's springtime here in the UK, so I'd like it to look nice and cheerful. There we are. Now, if I close Cinema 4D and open it again, you can see that that change has been retained. Now that's kind of what you'd expect, but there are other ways that you can make changes to preferences without perhaps realising it, and we'll come on to that later on. For now, I think my colour choice has been a bit rash, and I've made some other changes in my preferences that I'm not too happy with, so I'd like to restore my default preferences. It's easy enough to do. What I need to do is open my preferences again, so let's edit, preferences, and at the bottom here, there's an option to open Preferences folder. So just click there to open it up. And there's my Prefs folder. Now, if you can't see it, it may be that you're inside it, in which case you just need to step back. So you can see it there, Prefs. Now, if I delete this folder and restart Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D is going to create a new Prefs folder with the default preferences. So you have a number of options here. You could just delete it. But if you want to retain whatever's in it, there's a better idea to rename it, as I've done here for example, or just to move it out of this folder for the time being, so you can put it back later on. For now, I'm just going to delete it. So I'll do that. Close Cinema 4D. And when I start it up again, if you watch here, you'll see the new press folder being created. There it is. So now we have default preferences. It's as if you've just installed Cinema 4D and everything's set to default. So now I want to show you how you can save a file so that Cinema 4D will open with it when you open Cinema 4D. So let's create a file. I'll go for a cube, make it into a polygon object, and I'd like it to be the child of a hypernerb. So I'll hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, click on the hypernerbs, let's just zoom in a little bit. And I'll go for point mode, select the cube. Now I've got a cube in a hypernerbs and I'm all ready to start editing it in point mode. So to save this file so that Cinema 4D opens with it, what I need to do is save it in my Cinema 4D root folder and call it template. So let's do that. File, save as. And here's my root folder. You can see the executables in it there. Don't go by this path. That's just where I've stored my installation. Generally speaking, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be in your Applications folder. And if you're on a PC, it'll be in your Programs folder, as you probably already know. So I'll just call it Template. Go for Save. And now if I close Cinema 4D, open it up again. As you can see, it opens with that template file. Now sometimes you may have found that when you're following a tutorial for Cinema 4D, what you've created from that tutorial just doesn't look the same as what you're seeing in the tutorial. And one reason for this can be that you simply don't have the same prefs as the tutor. Let me give you an example of what I mean. If I go to the Options tab here and turn off Isoline Editing, you can see that it now looks totally different, and this is the kind of difference I'm talking about. What you may not realise is that by turning Isoline Editing off, 
I've actually saved that as a pref. So just to prove the point, if I close Cinema 4D down and open it up again, you can see that my isoline editing is still off. It has indeed been saved as a preference. So if you were following a tutorial and you had default prefs and your tutor didn't, as far as isoline editing was concerned, you can see how confusion could arise. So I'd better turn my isoline editing back on. So I'll open this as a palette. To do that, I just need to click on the grasp icon there. So as well as isoline editing, there's two other options that can change in your prefs here. One's linear workflow shading. I recommend that you leave that on. And the other is normals. If you turn that on, you can't see a difference at the moment, but if I turn off the hypernerves by clicking on the tick here, select polygon mode and select a polygon, you should be able to see a little white lines appear just there. If I turn normals off, it'll disappear. Now you can see it quite clearly there. So that's normals. It just tells you which way the polygon's facing. And it's not really going to mess you up as much as isoline editing can. Just turn it back off, back to the default. Move this over here. My hypernerves back on, back to edge mode. And if I go to configure here, in the display tab, you see isoline editing there. I turn it off here, it turns off here. Two are linked together. But if you look closely, you'll notice that it's in bold. Anything that you see here that's in bold, if you change it, it's going to change your prefs. So you can see normals there, for example, isoline editing, x-ray, it's not in bold, so you can change that and it won't affect your prefs. So anything in bold, you need to exercise caution if you change it. Some of them, you won't see what happens straight away. Rotation bands, for example, if I turn that off, you can't see any change. If I go to model mode, select the rotate tool, you can now see the rotation bands are missing. I go back to configure, turn them back on again. You can see them again. So what I recommend is that you have a look at these different options that are in bold, but if you change them, reset them to what they were. See if you can see what the difference is when you turn them on and off. And if you can't remember what they were originally, you can always restore your default preferences. So next along, we have the filter tab here. This is exactly the same as the filter drop down you see here. And it controls generally what you can see and what you can't see in the viewport. Many of them are quite apparent, like the grid, for example. If I turn that off, you'll see the grid's disappeared. So I'll turn it back on again. But some of them, the generator, for example, can throw you. If I turn that off, you can't see any difference at the moment. But if I create a parametric object, let's go for a cylinder. Select the Move tool and move it over. You'll see that you can't see it. If I deselect it, you can't see it at all there. You can see it in the Object Manager here. You can't see it in the Viewport. Now that's because, like the other parametric objects, it's a generator. So if I go back to Configure and Enable Generators again, now you can see it there. I'll just delete it for now. Back to Configure. As I said, most of them are pretty much apparent. You can see there's just a few turned off there. But again, because they're in bold, any option that you change will be stored in your prefs. Next along we have View, and you can see that some of these again are in bold. So once again, you need to exercise caution. Moving on, we have Back, and here we have the grid. It's all in bold. I can change the size of the grid here. So if you've done that, you might want to restore your default preferences. I'll make a note of what you have originally. Next, we have the HUD. And this one's not too bad. Although everything's in bold, you kind of see what you get with this. If I just go to four views, the only one that's on is projection. If you look here where it says front, if I turn that off, that's what it controls. So you really want that one left on. The others, if I go for object name, for example, and select the cube, you see it's appeared there. 
So go back to config and the parent object. So anything that you enable here, you'll see it in the viewport here. It's not something that's really going to throw you. Just remember to leave this one on. Stereoscopic, nothing's in bold, so nothing will be retained in your prefs there. OK. Put things back where they are. Well, I hope I haven't worried you too much with these changing preferences, particularly if you're new to Cinema 4D. You can actually use Cinema 4D quite happily for several years without even realising that these changes were taking place. But that said, it is good to be aware of them. They're actually a good thing because it means that if you close Cinema 4D down and open it up again, you've got the same settings that you had when you left off. I'd encourage you to have a look at the settings that I've shown you here, change them around and see what they do. You can always change back to default preferences if necessary. And if you're watching a tutorial and things look a bit different, you now know that this could be the cause. Personally, when I write a new tutorial, I always start out with default preferences. That way, if I make changes along the way, anyone watching can see what's happening. So if you're following one of my tutorials, start out with default preferences and you should find that things run smoothly. There is one other thing that you can change in your preferences just by turning it on. And I'll come to that shortly. It might really throw you, but I'll cover that in detail shortly. But before I move on to that, I'd like to show you the file that I use as a template file. This is not a very good example, really, the one I've used here. I just used it for this tutorial. So let's have a look at the one I use. And I've actually renamed it here to text template. Open it up. And it's just some text in an extrude NURBS with a camera and a background. The camera is the main thing really. You can see it's pointing directly at the text. If we look in the other views, you can see in this view how it's aligned. And I've also changed the settings in the camera there. It's just quicker to have it open straight away like this than to make it. And I do use a camera like this quite a lot. If I didn't want to use any of the objects here, I could just delete them. So I might delete the text and the background, for example. So I've just got the camera. And that's my template file. So as I was saying earlier, if you are new to Cinema 4D, I hope I haven't put you off. It's a good idea to have a look at everything, change everything, see what it does. But there is one thing that can throw you, as I was saying earlier, and that's if you go to Window, Customization, Menus, and select a user menu. Now this is stored in preferences. You might not immediately see what it's done, but if you look at the top here, you find you now only have two tabs. Click on the file one, you have an option to quit. And the customization one gives you various options to customize things. The way to get out of it, if you find yourself in this position, is just to go to the layout tab here, where you'll also see the user menus and change back to the Cinema 4D menu. So you could come to it this way. If I change the user menu one there, for example, you see the same thing happens. But generally, if you do it from here, you know what you've done. Whereas if you go into it from the Windows drop down, you perhaps don't realize. So I'll switch back to Cinema 4D menu. Actually, from user menu one, there is a way out of this through the customization tab here you can actually rebuild your menus from here. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do that now. I'm going to move on to custom menus. So I'll switch back to the Cinema 4D menu. Go for the Window tab here, Customization, and Customize Menus. That brings up this little dialog box. And what you need to do is click here to get the drop down and select one of the user options. So I'll go for user one, that's user menu one. And you recognize the sub menus here, file and customization. That's what we saw up here before. So what I want to do is create a new sub menu. In order to do that, I first need to select one of the existing ones. And then I can create a new sub menu by clicking here. And I'll name mine 3D Verve. OK to that. 
Now at the moment it's in the middle here. It's always created above whichever sub menu you select before you create it. And if I switch to the user menu, user menu one, you can't see it there at the moment. What I need to do is click apply. You see it's in the middle there too. Now if I wanted it to be on the right hand side, it would need to be at the bottom here. And if I wanted it to be on the left hand side, it would need to be at the top. So I'll move it down, it's selected. Just go for move down, click apply, and you can see it's moved over there. If I select it, there's nothing in there at the moment. That's the next step to put some things in there. So I need to be able to edit palettes. You can get to it from here. So it's customize and it's called customize palettes here. And opens customize commands with edit palettes checked. I want to show you another way to get to that. So just close it, go back to the Cinema 4D menu, window, customize and customize commands. So that opens the same thing and you can just check edit palettes here. Now it's checked, it means that I can move things around. So I could click and drag the move tool, for example, down here. Better put it back. And I can also click and drag it from there onto my 3D Verve submenu. You notice that in this case, it stays where it is as well. So let's click apply. Go back to the user menu one. Now if I go to 3D Verve, I can see the move option in there. Okay, so let's add some more things. I'll go back to the Cinema 4D menu. And if I open the select drop down here, what I need to do is open it as a palette. To do that, I just hover over the grass bike on there. When it lights up, release there. So there's actually two ways to do that. You could just click on select and then click on the grasp icon. Anyway, once it's open, I can just drag things from here onto my sub menu. So I'll go for live selection, drag that over, release it when I see the down arrow, and I'll go for rectangle selection as well. Drop that on there too. Now you can control the order of these as well. I'll put live selection at the top. So I'll select it, move it up, click apply, switch back to user menu one. And now we can see there's my options in my 3D Verve sub menu. Okay, so in this way you can build up any menus you want along here and have anything you want in them. One more thing to do once you've done that and that's save your changes. So you go for save all changes and then when you open Cinema 4D again, go to that user menu, it'll be retained. If you decide you don't like it, you can just opt for revert to original. So click on that and it says, do I want to go back to the factory settings basically? So I'll say yes for that. And you can see now my 3D Verve tabs disappeared. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. If you have enjoyed it, you'll find my complete course, Time to Learn Cinema 4D R13, at 3dverve.com. It covers animation, modeling and materials, as well as lighting and rendering. These are some of the stills taken from the course. Check it out www.3dverve.com.